Today we have another short narrative episode for you, but before we begin the episode, I have a small favor to ask of each and every one of you. We are so close to breaking the thousand downloads per episode range on average. A few episodes already have, and many are very, very close. So my request is that the hundreds of you listening to each episode share this podcast with one friend. That's it. Just share it. The best way to spread this podcast is word of mouth, preferably in person. Grab your friend's phone and show them how to find podcasts. Many might not know what resources are available to them. Also, you can give a shout out about your favorite episodes on social media and tag us. That's at Mednemonist on Twitter or join the Mastermind group on Facebook. If you want more information on all of the Inside the Boards conversations, then go to our Slack community at bit.ly slash ITB Slack. So help this show reach a new audience and grow. With your support, I know we can get there. Welcome to the Medical Menemist Podcast, your source for memory techniques and accelerated learning in higher education. Now, here's your host, Chase DeMarco. Good morning, good evening, and good night, depending on what time zone you're in. I wanted to cover a little bit more today about space repetition and rehearsal and just how important this topic is and actually go into a few examples for you um, because this seems to be a very, very confusing point of contention for a lot of students and I know something I drastically messed up on. I really did incorrectly for the majority of my medical school years and it really came to bite me later on. It, uh, it negatively impacted a lot of my confidence in my own abilities, my test scores, and just all around my education. So you may remember from a previous episode I did on deliberate practice, uh, and I think I mentioned it in another episode, possibly with sketchy medical, I forget at the moment, I have this rule. It's a one one three one one rule. And that's basically to rehearse material you just studied within an hour of first covering it, within one day of first covering it, on the third day, or three days from your one day mark, whichever is easier for you to remember or set up on your Anki deck or whatever you're using for your space rehearsal and practice, within one week and within one month. And then after that, depending on how long you need to remember the material, such as for the boards, you might need to remember it for another year or two, so you might want to do three months, six months, one year, However you want to space after that is really up to you. The reason I set it up this way, as I covered a little bit in the past episode, is a lot of the evidence that I've read about says that studying your first rehearsal within an hour is going to greatly impact the amount of information you remember later. And let's look at this from a very logical standpoint. If I read a chapter in a medical textbook today, how much am I actually going to remember tomorrow? maybe 30% if I'm lucky. And I'm not saying recognition of the material. If I go through my notes, I'll recognize, yes, I read that. Yes, I remember covering that. And I might recognize 80 to 100% of it because it's a condensed version. It's just recognizing it. But can I rehearse it? Can I, without looking at any notes, without any primer, any material in front of me, rehearse that material to myself or to someone else? That is the difference in rehearsal practice. You need to be able to actually teach this material or at least be able to recite without any other markers the material pretty much verbatim. Now you're going to have your own notes, you're going to put everything in your own words and it's actually very beneficial to translate other people's notes into your own words. This allows your brain to synthesize the material and make sure you're comprehending this knowledge. So from there you might be thinking well The next day, yeah, you're right. I'm probably not going to remember a lot of this information. So I don't know it well enough yet. I'm just not going to put the time in. I'm not going to waste, quote unquote, my time trying to rehearse this material the next day or within an hour of our studies. And this is a huge mistake. This is something I did constantly. It's something most of my peers seem to do. It's just a very, very common thing for students to do. So if you're doing this right now, don't worry about it. This is 
how to sort of correct that mistake and that uh, logical fallacy that we form on our own. So yes, when I rehearse it within an hour, or even at that next day mark, that 24-hour mark, it could be within 24 hours, it doesn't need to be exact, but you get the picture, you are likely to not remember a lot of the material. You might only get 10% of it the next day, and that's perfectly fine. So just understand that going in. That is perfectly normal to not remember very much of it. The point of this first repetition, this first rehearsal, and even the second and third, is not to get everything right. It's to find out what you can't remember. So if I can only remember 10 or 20% on that one hour mark, that's great. Then I know which parts I need to review real quickly. So I'll go back to the notes, go back to the flashcard, wherever the material might be, and review the entire thing again. Say, which parts did I miss? Then at the 24 hour mark, I might remember an extra factor or two, maybe three. I might be getting up to 30, 40, 50% of recall at that point. And you might be saying, all right, this is a lot of energy I've put into possibly making flashcards and other study materials and then doing my first repetition only remembering 20, 30%, doing my second repetition maybe remembering 40, 50%. And this is going to vary. Some people might get to 80% on their second repetition. It's really individualized. Don't base it on what other people do. Don't even base it completely on what I'm telling you. This is just my experience. But yes, it's going to take a lot of time, those first two repetitions. Stick with it. Do another repetition in a few days, and you'll add a little bit more. Do a repetition a few more days after that, at about the one week mark is what I like to do, and you'll remember a little bit more. And this is why spaced repetition is so helpful. And not just repetition of material, but rehearsal, recall of the material without being primed, without looking at material. And you might be wondering if looking at a flashcard is a primer. Kind of. It depends on how you set up your flashcards. You can set them up to be vague enough that you need to actually use your memory to recall the information. If you have too much information on the front of your flashcard, it's going to give away the answer. And then you're not really stressing your brain. You're not stressing your memory. And that is kind of the key point here. Another aspect is like we don't want to do this practice initially because it's so mentally taxing, you have to schedule it properly because it's so mentally taxing. You cannot really expect to do eight hours a day of this type of study. It's just going to be too much. The cognitive load and stress on your mind is going to be too much. It takes a lot of energy. And we know that our brain already takes up most of our energy throughout the day anyway. I mean, the brain takes 60-80% of our daily intake of glucose. So yes, it's an energy hog just normally running. So when we're doing this very strenuous, mentally taxing activity, it's going to wear you out quickly. If you can do even an hour a day, that's great. If you can make it up to two or three hours a day, that is awesome. The more you can fit into your schedule, the better. Okay, so now we're getting closer to maybe getting closer to that 80 to 90% mark, maybe even 100% on some topics that have less to memorize. So if we're taking a topic like cardiology, there is a lot of information. Remember, there's a lot of pathophysiology, there's a lot of medications, a lot of different diseases. You might not be able to remember every single bit for each particular disease. Not initially anyway, but you'll get up to that. You'll build every repetition. You'll build a little bit more of that memory foundation. You'll build a little bit more of the information you couldn't remember before because you'll point out, oh, shoot, that was something I got wrong. Oh, that was difficult to remember. Making note of it during every repetition will help you on future repetitions. So that's why doing multiple space repetitions is going to be beneficial as well. Don't just stop at two or three. It's really not enough for many of these topics, at least not for the long run. You might remember it to the end of the week or the month, and then you'll forget it. So if you're finding that that's happening to you, you need to increase the number and possibly the frequency of your rehearsals. This is something that can also be applied to our memory palace training. So if we have a lot of memory palaces or different visual markers, if you're using memory palaces, the linking method, also known as the journey method, or any other visual tactic to remember a lot of complicated material, you want to add those to your rehearsals as well. So one way you can do this is to write them down in a journal. Actually, that was something that was mentioned on a past episode with uh, Stat Med Learning, the Stat program with Ryan Orwig. He requires all of his students to write these down in a journal. If you can't draw them out, that's perfectly fine. You can just verbally write it out. Whatever is going to act as a reference for you. So if you forget a point later on during one of your rehearsals, which is going to happen, 
you have a reference point to come back and say, oh, that's the part I forgot, and then add it back in. If you can draw these out, that's awesome. I know there's even some programs coming out there. I think Picmonic has one where you can make your own uh, visual markers. There's also the artofmemory.com, which has different programs that you're able to create your own memory palaces. So you can use these, create your own visuals, and either print them out, add them to a flashcard deck, whatever is easier for you. But the main point we keep coming back to is no matter what type of material you are using, you want to be very deliberate with what you're doing. Don't just keep following a routine because someone said so. Make sure that you follow certain rules as far as being efficient with your time and and not using tactics that have pretty much been shown not to work, uh, such as rereading chapters and usually highlighting notes and textbooks doesn't work very well. But also monitor what you have had successes in and what you've had failures in. This is something that's great to keep in a study journal or just a Word document on your computer, some sort of note to keep yourself honest and say, hey, I did this for X amount of time. I didn't feel like it worked because, or I did this and it worked really great. And I think it's because adding that why will help you monitor over time because we're bound to forget over time, our confirmation bias might say that we did this better than we did or that worse than we did. And having a written journal and documentation can be very useful for monitoring and adjusting your future study habits. All right, I think that's about it for this episode. I want to thank you for listening. I'm not sure if this is going to come out before or after the Anders Ericsson episode, but that is the author of Peak and sort of the creator of deliberate practice as a terminology that's used in medicine, that's used in memory championships. He uh, helped to teach Joshua Fower, author of Moonwalking with Einstein, and uh, it's just a great episode. So do make sure to catch that. Uh, Like I said, the Stat Med program, especially part two, has some good information for creating your own memory palaces and some of his theories as an educator on how to make your study time the most efficient. We had some great interviews with the brothers Lemieux from uh, Sketchy Medical and their thoughts on, from an artistic standpoint, on how to create visual markers and set up your memory palaces. So a lot of great material in past episodes. Please go check them out and do watch out. I know I've been saying this for a while now, probably a month or two, maybe even longer at this point, for the upcoming Study Skills book. So... It's something I've been working on for a long time and working in conjunction with the rest of the team at Inside the Boards, and it is going to be a great study skills book, very different than any other medical study skills or general study skills book out there. And I know I've read a lot of them. I tried to study and synthesize as many of them as I could to help organize the material of this one, and it's just going to be great. I'll give more information as we get closer to the release date, but we're coming up with some of the final edits in the next few weeks. And depending on everyone's scheduling, hopefully we'll have that out this summer. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. Please tell your friends if you enjoyed this episode, grab their phone, just subscribe. They'll enjoy it. You know they will. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next episode. Hold up. Before the episode ends, I did want to toss in one more thing. It's been a while since we mentioned the All Audio QBank, our ITB, Inside the Boards app. So if you haven't checked it out yet on iOS, please go download that app. This will give you the opportunity to listen to a bunch of great audio recordings of board-style questions on the go. Whether you're driving to and from school, work, in the shower, cooking, cleaning, whatever it might be, you can get some extra study time in by listening to these questions. Also, if you haven't checked it out yet, we have our new addition to the ITB network of podcasts, which is the Physiology by Physio podcast. So go download that, get a refresher on some of your old physiology materials, or if you're studying it now, it is a perfect resource to add to your curriculum. There are also discounts for a physio subscription by listening to that podcast. So go listen, get the code, check the show notes, subscribe, and hopefully that will help you with your future studies. All five of our podcasts in the Inside the Boards Network are constantly receiving great discounts and coupon codes from the top leaders in education that we interview and that sponsor our show. So go check out all five shows in the podcast. Just search Inside the Boards and they should all show up on your podcast player. Remember, if you help support us as we grow, it'll give us the ability to get out more information for you, better information, higher quality, more frequently, We do it for you.
so your support is greatly appreciated. 